The objective of the private organization is slightly different from Nigeria is the most important country of education. The collapse of culture in Nigeria. Even with cheating, we can't pass. We've not done enough. There's still more. Join us. Martin Sobo and this is a chat to the professional. Today we are going to be focusing on the just concluded world summit held in Seoul, the Republic of Korea. So don't go nowhere, it's going to be a thrilling moment uh, with um, the organizers of that event uh, represented by the international president. But that will be after this short break. Please don't go away. My guest today is the International President of the Universal Peace Federation, UPF, organizers of the World Summit that held in Seoul, the Republic of Korea recently. Uh, Dr. Michael Jenkins is not just the President of the UPF, but equally serves as the Chairman of uh, the Washington Times Holding uh, in Washington, D.C., the United States of America. Uh, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. The World Summit 2020 just held, and by all standards, I, I must congratulate you. It was a huge success, you know, attracting thousands of delegates from all over the world. So, going forward, what do you expect? Well, the World Summit 2020 was very satisfying. It's a product of work since 2005, when the Universal Peace Federation was founded, and ambassadors for peace were created in all disciplines, as parliamentarians, as religious leaders, women leaders, academicians, business leaders, and people of faith of all different backgrounds. And it spread to over 120 nations in just a short time. Uh, UPF was founded by the Reverend Sum Young Moon and his wife, Dr. Hak Chan Moon. And from the years 2005 to 2012, uh, they traveled throughout the world visiting uh, all the countries of the world on five major world tours. And one of those world tours was to 120 nations in one year. And when they would go to the nation, the ambassadors for peace, which are Christian, Muslim backgrounds, uh, all faiths would join in. And ambassadors for peace are members of parliament from different parties. But there's a higher value that they share, and we could see that at the World Summit 2020. That's why the presidents are coming and the prime ministers, former heads of state, they're coming together because there's some kind of a fulfilling experience and also you get the principles and the tools to end the violence. And that's what we see happening, getting the principles of how do we reconcile, how do we work through our conflicts. The fact that there are conflicts is not necessarily uh, wrong. Uh, there are conflicts because there are, it starts with the fact that we have differences of, of opinion. How do we bring people to the table? Reconcile our differences. And that's what uh, I think the founders were most keen on. So the founders were very keen on what brings people together, what brings people to the table, and what we found is there are some common points that all people share. One is that God is the creator of all mankind, and also that we are spiritual beings. We're not just physical. Uh, that's the second principle. We are spiritual beings, and therefore if we relate with to one another, recognizing the eternality of our fellow man and understanding that if we hurt one another, the consequences are not just short-lived, they can go on for generations. 
A third principle is that family and marriage is the key to peace, family and marriage. So when marriages are strong and the families are really growing with the nurturing of father and mother together, and the children are given principles from their faith traditions of how to love one another, how to really bring goodness, then they can get stronger. So those are the key principles of UPF. And when we share those in all kinds of settings and dialogue, we find that people who are really people of character, people of conscience, they have a tendency to come together. Even though they may totally disagree, they may be from enemy nations. But however, people, when they come together beyond their differences for uh, some kind of work together, it really, it really causes those values to start to resonate. So that's what I saw at World Summit 2020. You just mentioned the peace ambassadors, and I know that UPF has um, a number of uh, uh, peace ambassadors made up of uh, both serving and uh, retired uh, prominent politicians, uh, parliamentarians and professionals all over the world. So what are the roles of these peace ambassadors? The, the role of the ambassadors for peace is the most crucial. It's the most crucial aspect of the organization because we are really seeking to develop a foundation of good governance in society. We're seeking to create a situation where we can build coalitions together to strengthen families, to bring faith communities together. So building coalitions is the peace ambassador's role. So they need to be people of character and conscience. They have to be people that can listen to other people and be able to give love and respect. And so we find the peace ambassadors have to go through a growth process themselves because knowing how to love your enemy is not something we're born with. Um, loving your enemy is something that has to be practiced. And once you practice it and you start to see people that were not possible to reach or discuss or bring to the table, if you give genuine love uh, and genuine care for their well-being, uh, you can turn an enemy into a friend. That's what we see directly. That's what Martin Luther King was all about. I think a lot of it's modeled after the great work of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who I studied greatly. Uh, clergy in Chicago, where I was, uh, shared with me. A lot of them were key people that worked with Dr. King. And I learned the principles of nonviolence. And I, th I learned also that you have to really study the situation before you make an opinion. It's very easy to take sides or think what you've heard, oh, this, this person from this country believes this and this and therefore they're bad, and this person from another country is good. That's not really the, the way we bring reconciliation. We have to understand that all human beings have a common inner uh, spirituality. All people have an original mind, so to speak where if you touch them with something genuine, even people who are not good can turn towards goodness. So the problem of man is, goes back to the, the very fundamentals. Man disobedience to God leads to sin, leads to problems, and then people get blocked from going the good way. They go the way that seems to bring the most benefit. But in the long run, only living for the sake of others can really bring a benefit that not only serves fellow man, but also brings you benefit. It's a spiritual law. The spiritual law is you reap what you sow. So if you sow good seed of love, helping your fellow man, goodness, it's a universal principle, goodness is going to start to flow back to you. So I found an amazing thing. I went to Israel 46 times and I went to the Gaza Strip a couple dozen times. And I found that when we went with a, a heart of love, a heart of really wanting to improve the situation of the people, and even the people who were extreme, basically they're human beings like everybody else. Now, that doesn't mean they're okay and we should just tolerate when they do things that hurt other people. We can't tolerate that. But at the same time, we're not gonna change them through force and violence and hatred. They have to be changed in their hearts. 
So, and that's the question, is can we change people's hearts? And the answer is yes. And that's what the founders really believe. Dr. Moon advocated that. She absolutely believes that we can expand peace. <laughs>
great leaders of the world. However, the opportunity even increases for the young people when the father and mother both have a resonance with God. So that's how we bring peace. We start with the fact that our mind and body are in conflict. Until we end that mind-body conflict, we're going to be in conflict not only within ourselves but outside. So that's why we start there with the family and the blessing. We start with the individual, really. That's how you take it all the way down to the to the, the ground level, ground zero, yeah. is the individual. Okay. So that's what we're asking the presidents to do. Bring that blessing, the blessing and the prayers of the religious leaders. It can be done by re Muslim religious leaders, Christian religious leaders, and can be done together, like the blessing that was done today had seven religious leaders on the stage from different denominations, different religions. And we feel that God is working. And that's why we also have to do another thing that's besides just blessing marriage. We need interfaith dialogue. So the fifth principle of UPF is that interfaith relations create a foundation for goodness to flow. So interfaith dialogue is one of the most crucial matters that go beyond the family. And then I've been, that's why when we went to Israel so many times, we found dialogue is totally effective and totally possible. Especially dialogue when you're not trying to convince somebody uh, that what you're saying is the only way. That never works. Everybody has a piece of the puzzle. I love what Bishop Noel Jones said at one of our meetings in California with Mother Moon, and peace starts with me, he said that, you know, no religion can completely know everything about God. Because God is speaking to each of us as individuals and as, as different denominations, and there's different messages going out that God is giving. The fundamentals of those messages are the same. Live for the sake of others, love your enemy, love people, be faithful in marriage, but actually, the messages that you're receiving uh, from God, the experiences you have with God, are unique to you. And they're infinite. They're infinitely important also. Because God is giving each one of us experiences so that we play our own role in, in the fabric of the kingdom, of building a better world. So that's why spirituality and really finding that, that value of people if God speaks to them, that's why Noel Jones was saying even Christianity can't possibly know everything about God. And therefore, we have to open ourselves to understand that my brother down the road in a different denomination or even different religion has something he knows about God that I need to hear about. God is universal. And the one thing that really is important, he is the creator of every one of us. So he has a relationship with every one of us. Yeah. So what impact do you think the IAED would have on uh, global peace? Well, again, when we see our purpose from God and the goodness that can come when we practice the principles of living for the sake of others, it, a, a cultural change can occur. That's why business has the power to change culture, to improve culture not only economically, but when people see businesses actually taking on a philanthropic role to bring their, the fruits of their labors into a situation where they're empowering goodness, where they're investing in projects that help the community, like businesses getting behind the whole effort to raise youth businesses investing in youth and education will create the geniuses that can solve climate change. We're not going to solve climate change from just short-term measures. We're going to solve the problem of the environment by stewardship of the environment. And we can't pin the problem down on one person or one little thing. That's, it's not enough. We're not going to stop driving cars. We're not going to stop flying airplanes for the, you know, near future. Now someday we may, it may be all electric, but right now the reality is that is not going to change so easily. So how do we take the stewardship of the environment without being 
un, ineffective, ineffective at trying to, to implement measures that people aren't going to follow. People aren't going to start stop using cars. It's not going to happen. We can talk about it as an ideal, but until the technologies rise, so. The best way to deal with some of these things is invest in our youth. If businesses invest in the youth, in the education of youth. And that's why I think the continent that's rising the fastest right now is Asia and Africa, those two. Asia's already just skyrocketed and Africa is taking off now. And I think the whole point that Mother Moon sees is that we have to invest in Africa because Africa's she always says the first will be last. So that means the people who prospered first, you know, they had their, their era of, of blessings and so forth, and now God is equalizing everything. There's going to be a new transition. Africa's going to, Africa has the most resources, it has the most development, and it has the finest people that mankind has ever seen. So, but what's lacking? Enough investment in youth. And also investment in the whole idea of self-sufficiency, manufacturing. There's no reason why Africa isn't the center, center of industry. But that will take, it'll take two generations. But it has to be done. We have to educate the young people. So that's where I think IAED comes in. I know Mr. McDivitt, who's the chair of the IAED, worked with Jim Rogers and others. I think that was tremendous. I attended one session and uh, I was very, very moved by what I saw because there are principles that they're discussing. What is the mission? So it's not optional. So when Mother Moon saw our business foundations, I was put in charge of the bishop businesses in North America for many years and, and now I'm just on the boards, but and she asked me to be the president of UPF. Well, what I found was you know, she also got very strict with the business. She said, anything that's not working, fix it. Anything that's not making a profit, turn it around. And if it can't be fixed or it can't be turned around, then sell it or close it. Once you get profitable, that's good. But then how do you take that profit and multiply it so it betters humanity? Yeah. And that's where we say investments in other businesses, investments in self-determination. We encourage you know, small business development. That's the best way. I had a small business in Chicago for many years. It changed my life. Having to make payroll without any help and with the banks not, where you're not strong enough that the banks are going to give you a large credit line, you got to make payroll. It's best not to get your money from the banks. You know, the best way to get your money is from your customers. Now, banks play a crucial role at allowing you to leverage borrowed money so you can better serve your customers. But if that money is not leveraged properly, it puts you in debt and that can destroy the business. So the reality is the best place to get your money is from your customers. And the only way to get the customers to give you money is give them the best service, the best product. And we can change the world with that too. That's why all the businesses that, uh, that UPF is associated with, <coughs> they're going through this process of of revolution. Some are changing and just exploding with profits. Some are being closed because without that kind of sense we can't really develop. Now what are we going to do in Africa? Africa's got great leadership, great people. They're ready. The world is ready. And also we have to also solve some of the inner problems too with not only with business but that's why uh, Dr. Moon went to Senegal and went to Gori Island. And in Gory Island, she gave a sermon there in the slave house that how could Christians do what they did in Africa? So she's calling on European Christianity has to repent. We have to repent. Europeans, myself, I'm a European descendant. I have to repent. I have to repent that we didn't practice the gospel and empower people and raise them up and give them the gospel and let them, let them really, or, or, you know, support them and respect them and see them develop their own ownership. Instead, uh, the nations that brought Christianity into Africa also became self-centered on their own benefit, took the resources out, misused the people, and now there's a, there's a condition. And the yoke has to be broken on that condition. There's a condition of sin 
that has to be broken. Because also the people who suffered under that sin, that oppression by the sin of, the, of those who are bringing the gospel and not practicing and not loving like Jesus did, not empowering, not giving, you know, uh, true ownership. Those, those things have to be rectified because without that, that yoke being broken, and that's what she's also focused on. That's why I think it's attracting the presidents too because we got to be honest. We've got, we're not saying that anyone uh, can just prosper by just hard work. It takes good fortune. You've got to have good fortune. And that good fortune comes from treating other people correctly. So the fact that they weren't treated correctly has to be rectified. The first thing has to happen is, is to repent. Next thing has to happen. But that repentance can't be lip service. Nobody's going to take lip service. That repentance also has to require some kind of investment and partnership where I'm so sorry for what I did when I ran over your fence that I, you know the guy who ran over your fence can't just say, gee, I'm really sorry. You know, well... That's not enough. Fix my fence. You can't just be sorry after you ran your car off the road and ran over somebody's white picket fence. You've got to be able to really be sorry means I'm going to fix that and I want you to forgive me. I was wrong. I, I lost control of my car. You know, I'm going to fix that. We have to fix that. We have to fix the things we did wrong. And a big part of that is, is done by UPF. So we're very honored to meet you, Mr. Obu, and we're very honored that you attended IMAP for the media. I work with the Washington Times Holdings, and also that that is not only with the media and communications, but it's also the influence of the media. How can we influence with the power of the media for a purpose? The purpose for us is family, or freedom, family, faith, and service. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jenkins, for being a part of my show today. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. O. Thank you very much. time would permit on the church at the professional today come next time by God's grace uh, I shall also be having another professional that will indeed inspire you but let's go out there and preach peace and ensure that we love our neighbors as we love ourselves I'll see you again Professional. Oh, 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 oh